Hello, good afternoon. Let's do the shutdown rule. Before we do, uh, some of these examples get kind of abstract and weird. And if I was you, I might be like, well, when would I ever use something like this, right? So uh, this is a little practice thing that you might actually come across, right? So it's a pretty good example. So you're running a widget company. They have this cost structure, the quantity. Uh, we can produce 500 units. We already did produce 500 units. Uh, we can produce a, an additional unit, and the average total cost of that additional unit is going to be $201. Uh, they want to buy the unit. They approach you want to buy the unit for $450, which would be above um, the average total cost of that uh, 500 first unit. Okay. question is, would you sell it to them? So remember, we always want to profit maximize, so I, I suggest you pause the video. Think about it. This is the kind of question that you may face in your career. And there's not going to be a person telling you the answer in a second. So pause the video, think about it, calculate, read that bottom part, see if you can figure it out. Okay, now I'm back. And uh, hopefully you, uh, you made the calculation and that you figured out that total cost is quantity times average total cost. So you should have multiplied uh, 501 times 201 and you would have gotten 107 uh, whoops, 100,701, and that marginal cost of that additional unit is $701. So you should not have produced that unit. That might actually get you fired by somebody else if you made that production decision, right? You caught the unit cost the firm $700, and you sold it for $450. Uh, not a good, uh, good, good decision. So again. Uh, this stuff is is abstract, but it does come up uh, in in the real world. All right, so here we've got a uh, situation. You just got a cost uh, increasing um, marginal cost. We've got a marginal revenue. I just go to where they cross. This is profit maximization. It's pretty easy. If I'm at QA, this means I'm not making uh, as much profit as I could be. I need to increase production. And if I'm at QB, it means that these units cost more than I'm selling them for. You should decrease production, and uh, you should get to Q1, right? That's that's what you should be after, okay? So that's profit maximization. We already know that. Um, if the price goes up, then I can increase out here to Q2, um, and the marginal cost curve is essentially uh, the firm's supply curve, right? It's how they make decisions at the margin, okay? So you might see something like this on the homework. In fact, I bet you will. The price is $10. Uh, and so how much revenue will I make? Well, um, it's $10 times 50, so I make $500. And then the average total cost there is um, $300. So that's six times uh, 50, right? So the calculating the profit there is a $4 profit. You could also just do it that way. So $4 times 50 gets you a $200 uh, profit in this market, okay? Now in this case, uh, marginal revenue is below average total cost, so we know we're going to lose money. How much are we going to lose? We're going to lose $2 per unit. So it's $2 times 30. We're going to lose $60, right? So uh, there we go. There's a $60 loss, right? So this is bad. Um, we've probably seen this, right? So we've got a, a firm here. They're, they're open. Um, they have no customers. Uh, why do they stay open, right? So there's an answer here, right? And so in economics, um, we have a couple we're kind of picky about this, but uh, oh darn, a little bit covered there. Um, show, uh, shutdown, rather, is a short-run decision not to produce anything because of market conditions. So in the upper Midwest, the ice cream stores like Dairy Queen and other places like that, they close down because it's cold. Okay. Here in Tucson, where I'm at, uh, there's a firm, and I'll let you think for a second. There's a firm that closes down during the winter months, pretty famous firm, and that's the Breakers. Why does the Breakers close down? Well, they know that the demand is going to decrease during the winter. They probably would get some people to go there, but I'm not sure they would cover the, the variable costs, which are their water, right? So they're still going to pay the property tax or the rent. They're still going to pay um, any, you know, long-term advertising costs, management costs, all of those, uh, but they are going to shut down during the winter months and then reopen every, uh, every spring, okay? Now that's different than exiting from the market. Exit from the market means you got a long run decision. You're going to leave the market. Here's the Stardust Hotel. Uh, they they completely closed down. They have no longer a casino in Las Vegas. Okay, uh, and the key difference is shutdown is a short run difference. 
Um, we're going to still pay our, our fixed costs like the Dairy Queen in Minnesota. Uh, and in the long run, we're just going to get get rid of all of our costs altogether. Okay, So the cost of shutting down is, means I'm going to lose my revenue. Uh, but the benefit of shutting down is I don't have to pay my variable costs. Right? I can send my employees home, save on the costs there. Right? So the rule here is I'm going to shut down if total revenue is below variable cost. Okay, in other words, it's going to cost me more in variable cost to stay open than it is uh, to shut down for a while. If I divide both sides by Q, uh, well, what is this? Well, this is uh, total revenue divided by Q is going to be the price. We've learned that before. And this is average variable cost. Okay, and so the, the real rule is if the price is below the average variable cost, we're going to shut down in the short run and wait for things to get better. And firms do this sometimes. Uh, they do it on a nightly basis often, but they, they, they may do it for a month or something. Firm might close down in the summer months. You see a lot of firms around the U of A doing this, right? Because they know that the price, that the market price it's going to give them is less than the average variable, variable cost to stay open. This is a graphical example. Okay, so this is the shutdown point. And the shutdown point is going to be uh, this point right here, right? Where uh, it's going to be at 8, okay? Uh, because that's the minimum of average variable cost, and it's where uh, if the price is below that, we're going to shut down. If the price is above that, then we're actually going to stay in business, and we're going to stay in business because the loss won't be as much, right? So if, if the price was nine, we're going to cut this loss in half, right? So I'm still going to lose money, but I'm not going to lose as much uh, than I would if I sh completely shut down, okay? This is another version of it. You can read that. Um, so it's another way of kind of thinking about uh, don't cry over spilled milk, right? Don't don't think about the fixed costs. Think about the costs you can change, the things you can do things about, right? So the, these terms, uh, this this is termed sometimes as sunk cost, right? It's it's over, can't have it back. You know, a good example would be you know you're watching a a Netflix film and you know it doesn't cost you anything in terms of money, but there's an implicit cost there. Uh, so if you keep watching it, you could be doing something else, right? So the, the fact that you sunk those costs in are really irrelevant in your choice, right? You really need to think about marginal costs. Right? So if you think about for your life, uh, you know, you've worked at a job for a number of years, and you think I shouldn't look for a new job because I've been here for so long. That's not really the way to think about it. You need to think about if the job is making you miserable, if the marginal costs exceed the marginal benefits, it's time to, it's time to shut her down and do something else, right? Uh, there's some dating implications there that uh, you can look up online. So here uh, we can kind of see where where it happens. So if price is below average variable cost, we're going to shut down. And if the price is above, we'll keep keep running. Um, but in the long run, this is exiting the market. If the price is below average total cost, okay. So if the price is like right here. And in the long run, it's just never coming down. I can, I just can't get those average total costs to come down. Um, the, the, the price isn't going up. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. It's time to exit. Okay, so that's exiting the market in the long run. Firms do this, right? Blockbuster Video decided that the, the price is below their average total cost, and they, and they exited the market. Okay, Mervin's another example. Flip side is if the price is is above your average total cost, you know you can produce that unit, those units, for a higher price, that or higher, a lower cost than what the price is in a perfectly competitive market. It's time to enter that market, right? So this is happening example. This would be like kale farmers, right? So farmers are realizing that the price of kale is pretty high. They can produce the kale at a lower price or lower cost to them than they can sell the kale for, and they go ahead and uh, enter the market. So that's entry and exit. It's free in uh, perfect competition.